future of gadgets isn't necessarily the homogenous iPhone. With open source hardware and personal manufacturing, we can all have custom gadgets someday. Mark Argo talks about what we can learn from history as we try to make a DIY future. Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Um, yes, uh, as Michelle said, is I'm an artist technologist. Uh, I teach at Ryerson. Um, but I'm also a, a gadget enthusiast. In fact, I make my own gadgets. These are a, a couple of examples. Um, and, uh, you know, it goes, for me, it goes beyond just making things. I'm also kind of interested in the origin of gadget. What is gadget? And uh, part of this fascination for me began uh, with my grandmother, who is quite an eccentric. She loves to shop, always likes to find the most... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the most novel and unique thing out in the store. Um, so every single time I would go over to her place, there would be something new for me uh, to spark my imagination. Um, whether it was her uh, quintessential fashion item, the clock purse, which she carried around everywhere, long before Flavor Flav, I tell you. <laughs> and, uh, or, or, you know, or the latest and greatest in uh, technology that had been shrunk down, like micro televisions, etc. But it's kind of interesting to me, the word gadget has kind of all these negative connotations of something with batteries that's kind of a piece of crap and it's temporary, he's going to throw it out. But uh, gadget is actually, you know, back at the turn of the century, gadget was considered anything that was an ingenious article. And one of the most popular types of gadgets was the cane. Uh, people, it was very fashionable, people would carry them around and so they would have these customized canes that would be... Uh, uh, adapt uh, themselves to their environments. Like this one contained uh, matches and uh, toothpicks you could whip out at any time. This was the surgeon's cane that would break <laughs> apart for, uh, uh, with, contained scalpels, bromide, a syringe for uh, surgeries on the go. And, uh, uh, and if you loved horses, uh, you would have the horse measuring cane so you could uh, figure out who you, uh, who you wanted to put your money on. And while we've come a long way since the cane, um, really we st are still trying to embed this type of personal adaptation of technology into our devices. But we've lost something along the way through, uh, and a lot of this is due to mass, mass production. This is the, the current version. Um, these things are no longer as uh, personal to us. Uh, and when you, know, when you think uh, way back, <laughs> uh, you can even consider that the first gadgets were things like the, the knife and the spoon. These were things that were either fashioned by a local craftsman or even you made them yourself, but they were quintessential to how you would uh, uh, navigate your own environment. You would need these things in order to survive. And while you know, mass production has given us a knife and a spoon, uh, we're no longer attached to these, these objects. They've lost the personal touch. Um, it actually hasn't been too long since we still depended on local craftsmen to fashion uh, extremely personal pieces of technology for us, like the shoemaker, the optician. More and more, we're starting to see these things uh, become less and less personal. Uh, and yet, if you wanted to, say, go to your local Radio Shack or Best Buy and get a, a piece of technology that was personalized for you, the, majority of, the best thing that they would probably be able to come across with is point you towards the uh, iPod accessory rack or a new funky pair of earbuds. Um, it's, it's not a great prospect. And yet, gadgets have never been more important to us than they are now. Uh, there's uh, What's in Your Bag Flickr pool, where people from all over the world submit photos of uh, what they carry around with them on a daily basis. And it's pretty amazing to think of the amount of stuff that we think is, is uh, absolutely critical to the way that we experience our world now. You know, the digital society forces us to have to have these types of gadgets with us all the time. And yet, they're no longer personalized. They are just things that we pick up off the rack. Perhaps we put a sticker on it. Uh, it's really not that different. But finally, we're starting to see uh, uh, trends that are moving us towards adapting this technology for us. Uh, Make Magazine, SparkFun Electronics makes these types of things more accessible to us. And there are artists that are working exclusively in the customization of gadgetry. Uh, ben Heckendorn, who makes, uh, takes off-the-shelf uh, game consoles and makes one-off commissions for people, like the Xbox laptop. 
Uh, there was, uh, he received a commission from uh, uh, a kid who had a disability and wanted to play Xbox, but there was no one-handed controllers that he would be able to use. So Ben made one customized for him. And I think we're actually working our way towards the time where you're going to be able to go into almost your, your corner gadget maker, much like, the, uh, much like the optician or the shoemaker, and get a personalized piece of technology, a, a cell phone or an MP3 player that's designed just for you. And we're starting to see lots of artists that are playing with this. And I've put a couple links on my site. And I'm actually really excited for that, mo that moment because uh, I think it would be a fun job to have to be making gadgets specifically for people's needs. And that's it. Thank you.